Welcome back to another episode of Four Expedition Adventurer. In this episode, we explore the picturesque Rio Grande del Norte National Monument of Northern New Mexico. We descend 800 feet into the gorge to get up close and personal with the mighty Rio Grande. Come along for a stunning hike into this jewel of Northern New Mexico not to be missed. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Four Expedition Adventure. I'm Scott Luthold. Well, Heather and I decided to go out a couple of days ago to do a little bit of exploring. We've been staying in Red River, New Mexico, due to our evacuation from Black Lake from the Hermit's Peak Half Canyon fires. Well, it turns out all the forests around Red River are closed right now, so we decided to go down to Cuesta, New Mexico, and do a little bit of exploring around that area. Well, we happened upon the Rio Grande del Norte National Monument. We came out here and took a look around, and we decided to come back here today to do a little bit of scouting. We're going to drop down into the canyon and check out the confluence of the Red River with the Rio Grande. Um, it should be a really great hike today. We're going to do a little scouting for a future backpacking trip. So I really hope you enjoy this episode. So sit back and enjoy the ride. All right, we're at the Big Arsenic Trail. We're going to head down. Uh, looks like it's a mile down to the bottom and then probably, I'm going to guess, another mile out to the confluence. So here we go. It's really pretty crazy. This trail reminds me so much of hiking down into the Grand Canyon. I mean, look at this. We've got this incredible canyon. It's obviously not nearly as deep as the Grand Canyon, but it's definitely enough to be reckoned with. I think that this canyon is 800 feet at its depth is the deepest part. And I think it's something like three quarters of a mile wide at the widest. So not the same as the Grand Canyon, but pretty fantastic. Yeah, where we're hiking down to the confluence of the Red River with the Rio Grande is definitely the deepest and widest part of this entire canyon from, well, the gorge here in this part of New Mexico. So it's a, it's a beautiful spot and the weather is absolutely perfect right now. Blue skies, little breeze, it's gonna be really beautiful. Check this out, this is so cool. Dropping down here, switchbacks that are held up with retaining walls. It'll be fun going back up. It is such a beautiful day today. When we left Red River, it was around 40 to 43 degrees. We got down here, it ended up being about 55 to 58 degrees. As the sun comes up higher over the top of us, it's probably gonna jump up into low 60s, I would guess. But it's absolutely beautiful blue skies. Well, we're dropping down here and it looks like we're getting into the Ponderosa Pine. At the top is more juniper and pinion. And as we get down lower, as you see here, everything starts to change. Right. so we came to a little intersection. We can go 0.4 of a mile to, well, if we'd have kept going straight uh, to Big Arsenic Springs, but we know we want to go to Little Arsenic Springs Camp and La Junta, so we've got about 2.5 miles out there and back. If we have enough energy when we come back, we'll go down to Big Arsenic Springs. So Little Arsenic Springs Camp looks like a place where you can come down with your backpack and stay overnight. It's not a very long hike down, 
but it looks like a really cool place to pitch a tent and do a little bit of day hiking and playing along the river. So that's what we're coming down here to check out. And I've always wanted to see the intersection or the confluence where the Red River meets the Rio Grande. It was always a little bit elude, elusive to me. So we're gonna check that out too. Wouldn't it though? So this region is considered a high desert environment. So there are some cacti here, not very many. They're not very big, but there are uh, almost like pygmy. I would say almost like pygmy prickly pears. I'll see if I can show you one here in a minute. So these look very much like a prickly pear. They're even getting buds on the end. I wonder if they do get the pears. But this is about the extent of the cacti that you find in this area. Otherwise it's pinion pine and that sort of thing, juniper. Maybe some sage. Pretty rocky here. Wow, check out this basalt pile. We just came down and around this here. Covered in lichen. Beautiful. Looks to me that there's three ridges that you drop down off of from the top. This is the second one right here. And then straight ahead out here, there's another pretty good size drop that goes down to the river. Coming up on this other ridge, I think this might be the last ridge we have to drop. Oh yeah, you can hear the river. Can't see it yet though, here it comes. Right around this bend. Oh wow, check it out. Wow. That is fantastic. The Rio Grande. So the Rio Grande's headwaters are in Silverton, Colorado, just above Silverton. And I think it comes off of Engineers Pass on the eastern and southeastern slope. And uh, as most of you know, the Rio runs all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. What an incredible river. Wow. It's hard to believe this is part of our new playground. I mean, this is the best of all worlds. It's like having the Grand Canyon only about 45 minutes to an hour drive from your house. And then being up in the high eight, nine, 10, 11, even 13 foot peaks all around you. Even if it's cold and snowy up in the mountains, you know, there's probably some chill here as well as some snow. I see there's cross country ski trails up on the rim here, but I bet you we can come down out of this in the winter time and get out of the snow and do some hiking down in this beautiful canyon and uh, kind of have a reprieve from the colder weather. This is just really spectacular. I don't think either Heather or I were expecting it to be this extraordinary. What an incredible place. fun to see what types of things you have to do to make an awesome video. I'm up here on the ridge. Then he climbed down. But it'll make an amazing shot. Look at this beautiful man. I'll help you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Love you. Of me is going to be my husband, and as somebody had just said, I have surely met my match. True, true, he is a true, beautiful spirit, adventurer, and willing to go and explore. Love it. Just wanted to show you this basalt and how it comes right down to the river. Incredible, great glowing edges on these rocks. Look at that. So smooth. Come down the flow here. There's a giant one right there and look how just how shiny that is. Look here. Beautiful little tributary. Yeah. Little arsenic. So we got little arsenic springs. Is uh, oh, that was that water feature that we just passed. Okay. Point one of a mile to camp. Let's check that out. It's got to be like right here. All right. Looks like we're coming up on camp. Really interested to scope this out for the future. I don't know if you need a permit to camp down here. Maybe you can't camp down here at all. I don't know. It does call it a camp. There is a restroom here. There is? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yep. So there's a spot back in there as well. As Heather pointed out, this looks like a camp. Yeah, there's, oh yeah, there's campfire pits. Oh my gosh. A little summer camp. This is where we're gonna come camping. We're gonna do our first backpacking trip here. They even have shelters. Look at this, let me zoom out a little. They even have a shelter for your tent. Really awesome. And right out here, drops straight down. There's, there's even down a there. beach down there. Uh, so what's really interesting to think about is the fact that I've lived here now for over a year. Um, my anniversary was May 1st and Heather of course has been here less than a year but we've been so preoccupied with getting our cabin done for whatever reason um, it wasn't until I guess December that we thought we needed to get it done for our wedding but otherwise we just wanted to get it done so we could have this beautiful place to live in we could take off and do our adventures and come home and that's what we're doing now uh, mostly because the pan oh, excuse me, mostly because of the forest fire evacuation has forced us away from doing all these projects and into just experiencing life. And there's just so much to see around here. I mean, I mean, of course, I knew the gorge was here and the Rio Grande came through near Taos, and I'd, I'd, I'd of course already looked off the edge of the canyon wall over by Taos, but I didn't know that something like this existed where you could backpack down to a gorgeous piece of land like this overlooking the Rio Grande. I'm just stunned and I have to say that I just love this region even more. Yeah, it's got a picnic table. It's got a shelter for your tent. This one doesn't seem to have a fire pit, but uh, it does overlook the water here very nicely. I mean, I tend to not really need a campfire if I'm backpacking anyway. It's nice to have sometimes, but uh, it's not absolutely necessary. This one up here also looks like it's pretty amazing. Has a shelter, has a picnic table and a fire pit, and it overlooks the canyon. Amazing. This is the winter, winter chicken dinner right here. And this is off the trail too. It's a trail to its own camp spot. Look at that. The shelter. Look at the fire pit over there. And you've got the river right here. Go to sleep, lulled to sleep by the sound of the water. You wanna come camping here? 
Yeah, this spot. This is the spot. Mm. I, don't, I don't think they're numbered, though. I think it's maybe first come, first serve. Touch the Rio Grande, shall we? Well, we got off the main trail back at that campsite. And one thing that Heather and I both have in common is that we'll get off the trail a little ways and we'll keep going further and further. Now, uh, we're both pretty good navigators and we have emergency first aid and food and all the necessities, I guess, along in the event something were to happen. Not to mention the fact that I have my Bofang radio, which works down here. And I have an extender. Um, it's called a whip antenna. It goes about two miles. So if we had any trouble or something like that, I do have my radio. And if we come across somebody else that's having trouble, we also have a radio for that as well. I should probably also add that if you're interested in that radio that I use, it's only like 25 bucks. And I think the whip antenna is another 10 bucks. And uh, they're essentially a small ham radio, but there's certain channels that you can use where you don't have to be a ham operator. And I highly recommend anybody that's out in the wilderness like we like we tend to do to get one of those radios and if you're interested I do have a link for it below in the description of this video. Well, we decided to get back on the trail which is up there. So we're going to climb up just saw a hiker go by, so we know it's not too far. We're almost there. That last descent made me a little dizzy, which is an indication to me that I need water. I'd rather drink the water now before I get dehydrated. Make sure you bring enough water when you do this hike. Cheers. Well, sometimes Heather and I like to split up a little bit. We both like our quiet time in nature, so I'll walk up ahead. She doesn't always want to listen to me talking to the camera either, but uh, I totally understand where she's coming from. So I think I'm going to put the camera away for a little bit and just enjoy the scenery and the peace and quiet all the way out to the confluence. We'll be back with you shortly. All right, we've come upon another intersection here. Looks like the La Junta trail goes in about a quarter of a mile. And uh, we've gone, let's see, we came from Big Arsenic, so 2.4. Four miles. What's that? We're at four miles. We're at four miles according to Heather's watch. <laughs> nice. <laughs> finally, finally arrived the confluence. Where two rivers meet. So La Junta in Spanish means the joining. The joining. And that's where these two rivers converge. And it's a really beautiful site. I've wanted to see where Red River meets the Rio Grande for probably a year. So we're gonna cross over this bridge here and check things out a little bit closer. Ah, look at that. There's the Red River right there coming down. What a beautiful sight. And over here, the last of the Red River as it makes its way right down to the Rio Grande. What you got for lunch? Oh, I should have kept these in a, not the couch. So you got peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? Yeah, and chocolate. And, cho <laughs> and chocolate? Yes, 
gluten free. <laughs> the one with the craisins. What else we got? We got trail mix. We got apples. Boom. Cliff bars. Well, it's time to eat lunch. We're gonna take our time here and just relax and enjoy this beautiful scene. And, uh, and while we're doing that, I thought I'd share some beautiful scenery that I captured for all of you. to go over and see the actual confluence. There it is right there. There's the Red River. It flows right down here. And that's where it meets, right there. Beautiful. So let me just say a little something about evacuation. We've been evacuated now, I think about 12 days, and uh, it hasn't been a terrible experience for us. We'd much rather be at home, but uh, so far we've been trying to make it as fun as possible and, and uh, a unique experience, something we've never experienced before. Thank God we get to go home to our beautiful cabin. That would be a, a devastating matter, but fortunately for us, the fire has spared our, our region of the valley. So. Anyhow, um, you know, there's only so much you can do. Once you leave your house, you've just got to leave it all up to nature. And there's always a good possibility that everything could be taken from you. And then uh, there's that possibility that nothing 
goes awry. And so you've just kind of got to let go. At first I was pretty freaked out about the whole thing and I was distraught, but then as things set in and I accepted what is, uh, things just loosened up and we ended up having a lot more fun and letting go and not just maintaining a, a lifestyle of complete stress and worry where I know a lot of people out there are very, very worried about their properties. Now, it's been said and even commented on my videos that the people who have lost their homes have had those homes in their families for hundreds of years and that's all they really know, that's all they really want, and that's all they really need. So that's not really our situation. I did sell my property in Arizona. I did buy this property here in New Mexico with the plans of having this be my retirement property. And uh, as you all know, we put a lot of time and energy into getting this cabin the way we want it. And um, I guess if we would have lost everything, we would have had to start somewhere else. Or, you know, even worse, frankly, is if the entire neighborhood burned, but our cabin didn't, we would have uh, a property where we have a cabin in the middle of a completely burned forest. That's not that great either. Although I, I'm ha I would be happy, of course, that my property made it through the fire, but I would also be pretty devastated about my surroundings. And you wouldn't be able to sell that property very easily anyway. That's the situation that a lot of people down in Mora, Las Vegas, and all of the communities in between there are dealing with. And uh, I, as I mentioned before, Heather and I really feel for all of the people that are dealing with a major loss. And we're grateful that we we have our property. We intend to do, uh, do what we can to help people down in the valley who have lost everything. And thank God we didn't, but uh, we can certainly extend um, our goodwill to other people that have, have been dealing with that. Anyhow, so again, once, once you evacuate from your property, you've kind of just got to let go. It is what it is, and you've got to get back to living your life, even without your home. So that's what we're doing here. Evacuation beats quarantine. That's what my sister says. So we are out doing what we can do because no masks, nature, beautiful. Oh, look at all the eagles. Sorry. Decided to sit down and take a little break, have some water. Just realized we hadn't really drank much water. Our uh, Nalgene bottle, my Nalgene bottle is almost full. So definitely something to keep in mind. Drink lots of water on these trails. Now we're here in the end of May and it's, uh, it's beautiful out, nice cool breeze and all that. But when there's no breeze and you're in the sun, even though it's probably only in the high 60s right now down here, it's, it's probably a good idea to keep in mind that if you want to do this hike, it's probably better, especially in the summer, to do it in the morning, early morning, get down to the bottom and on your way back, you won't be baked by the west exposure sun. Because this, where we are in this canyon, it goes relatively north-south. And when we started on this hike, the sun was still in the, on the eastern um, slope. And so we had a lot of shade, but now we're much more exposed with the sun in the west and finding a place to, to sit in the shade is a little bit more difficult. If you look at all the gigantic ponderosa pine trees that we were in the shade of earlier, they're all fully exposed right now. So keep that in mind if you do this hike. We get to the top of the first ridge. Looks like, I don't know if we're going around this one or up this one right here. Then we got a, another one up there. And I have a feeling there's another one just above that because that looks like it's higher up over there. Beautiful though. And the view is nice too. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm out of shape. I need to lose like 10 pounds. I'm out of shape, for sure. I gotta be able to keep up with that woman. She's 10 years younger than me. And don't tell me I don't need to lose weight. Check this out. I didn't ever have that before. I think this cabin living, living with someone you're in love with just socks on the weight, especially in the winter time. 
we decided to come up the Little Arsenic Springs Trail instead of the big. This brought us up the ridge a lot sooner. Okay. Oh, did you find an elk shed? Oh yeah. Oh, nice. Or the one that's on. Or maybe that's from a jackalope. She's got way more energy than I do. <laughs> well, we're getting to the top. As soon as we're level with that hill on the other side, we'll be at the top. And the top's right up there. Yeah, this wall right here that we're gonna switch back up on top of, I saw that almost from the bottom of the canyon, or at least halfway up this this ridge. We're finally here. Another rest stop. Much needed. Much needed. Then we get to the top, we have about a little under a mile of flat. <laughs> flat. Oh, the car. Oh, never mind. That's somebody else's. We made it, honey. All right, so now that we're at the top, you can see the snow-capped peaks in the distance. On the other side of that mountain range is Via Vidal, which is where I proposed to Heather. It's really cool to come up out of this canyon and look straight across this valley here to a beautiful mountain range. Those are probably 12,000 foot peaks covered in snow. That snow came down last night. Coming up on another sign. I think it's a sign. I see a white truck. You do? A white sexy truck. Could it be? Could it be? Run! Run, Forrest! Run to that water fountain. Water. Well, all right, my friends, we made it back to the truck. Some of you might be wondering why we took the little arsenic trail back up the ridge as opposed to the big arsenic trail that we went down. And the reason is because I would have had to hike another mile and a half on uneven rocky boulder surfaces um, at the bottom of the canyon and then go up the switchbacks at the end. And instead we decided to go up the switchbacks early and then take flat, a flat trail all the way back, which is about a mile and a half flat trail here at the top. And uh, most of you probably recall, if you watch my channel, a couple years ago I was trail running down in the bottom of the Grand Canyon at Havasu Falls and I rolled my ankle so bad I had to be helicoptered out. Well, subsequently, I had to have ankle surgery, as many of you recall, and um, my ankle is still not 100%. It's, uh, it acts up from time to time. And so we thought it was better for us to come up the switchbacks early while my ankle wasn't really hurting, as opposed to going another mile and a half at the bottom of the canyon and then having to come up the switchbacks later. And that might cause a lot more problems with my ankle. So that's what we did. And we made it up, and this area here at the top is all relatively flat, graded trail, about a mile and a half, as I mentioned, back to the truck. So we're back to the truck now, and uh, we're getting ready to go home. All right, honey, how far do we end up going? 908. All right, okay. 1,500 feet of elevation gain. All right, well, that's, up, that's not too bad, huh? That's not too shabby. Not too shabby. <laughs> That'll do for our first, uh, first adventure out since winter banana breading it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right, my friends, I think that's it for this episode of Four Expedition Adventure. I really hope you enjoyed this episode as much as Heather and I enjoyed creating it. If you haven't become a subscriber of mine, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Of course, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when videos go live. And if you consider yourself to be an adventurer and you're looking for an adventure community, consider joining me at Team 4X by going to fourexpedition.com join to learn more. Until the next time, take care.